The field of trauma studies revolves around the examination of psychological trauma, its portrayal in language and the role of memory in shaping individual and cultural identities. Drawing from psychoanalytic theories on drama and incorporating additional frameworks such as post-structuralism, socio-cultural theory and post-colonial theory, scholars analyze representations of extreme experiences and their effects on identity and memory. Trauma is generally understood as a profoundly disruptive experience that deeply affects one's emotional organization and perception of the external world. Trauma studies explore its impact in literature and society by examining its psychological, rhetorical and cultural significance. Scholars delve into the complex interplay of psychological and social factors that influence how individuals comprehend traumatic experiences and how language both shapes and is shaped by these experiences. In its early stages during the 1990s, trauma studies heavily relied on Freudian theory to construct a model of trauma wherein extreme experiences were deemed essentially unrepresentable, challenging the limits of language and even disrupting meaning altogether. However, this traditional model has since been supplemented by a more pluralistic approach. This alternative perspective suggests that the assumed unspeakability of trauma is just one possible response to extreme events rather than its defining characteristic. While the notion that trauma challenges the limits of language and fragments the psyche continues to influence the field, alternative approaches have emerged, displacing this singular perspective. Nevertheless, the formal innovations of text, whether in print or other media, that shed light on the ways identity, the unconscious, and remembering are influenced by traumatic events remain central to the discourse in trauma studies. Freud's theories on traumatic experience and memory serve as foundational psychological concepts in the field of trauma studies. These theories emerged from the 19th century study of shock and hysteria by researchers such as Joseph Brewer, Pierre Janet, Jean Martin Charcot and others, culminating in Freud's seminal works like Studies Hysteria and Beyond the Pleasure Principle. In Studies on Hysteria, Freud and Brewer proposed the traumatic hysteria rises from a repressed earlier experience, particularly on sexual assault. They argued that the original event itself may not have been traumatic, but becomes so through its remembrance. The process of remembering, often through psychotherapy, like the talking cure or abreaction, is essential for understanding and overcoming the symptoms caused by the past event. Traumatic memories, termed pathogenic reminiscences, inflict psychological pain and contribute contribute to dissociation or splitting of the ego. Freud's later work in Beyond the Pleasure Principle expanded on these ideas, focusing on traumatic neurosis and the compulsion to repeat the memory of painful events. Trauma is seen as both an external shock and an internal defense mechanism against overstimulation. Traumatic neurosis involves a breach in the protective barrier against stimuli, leading to the compulsion to repeat the traumatic memory in hopes of mastering the unpleasant feelings associated with it. Freud emphasizes the importance of narrative recall recall in integrating traumatic memories into the psyche. However, he remained ambivalent about the permanence of traumatic memory and whether experiences leave permanent traces in the mind. The medicalization of trauma culminated in the American Psychiatric Association's classification of post-traumatic stress disorder in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, marking trauma as a distinct psychological disorder characterized by intense fear, terror, and Freud's theories, particularly those regarding the compulsion to repeat traumatic experiences, the fragmentation of the psyche and the unique nature of traumatic memory, have been instrumental in shaping the field of trauma studies. This area of scholarship explores how trauma influences memory, identity and language, especially in literary texts where representations of extreme experiences are analyzed. 
In the traditional Freudian model adopted by scholars like Kethi Karuth, trauma is perceived as an event that shatters consciousness and defies direct linguistic representation. Traumatic experiences are seen as unassimilated events that fracture identity and resist integration into narrative memory. Dissociation, a defense mechanism against overwhelming stimuli, is central to trauma, leading to its incomprehensibility and unspeakability. Trauma's impact on individuals and collective groups underscores the connection between personal and political realms, highlighting the universal effects of extreme experiences on consciousness and narrative recall. Karuth's influential work, Unclaimed Experience, Trauma, Narrative, History, builds upon Freud's theories to explore trauma's disruptive influence on memory and language. She argues that traumatic experiences, whether individual or collective, are never fully known but are instead represented through fragmented narratives that gesture towards the incomprehensibility of the past. Trauma's paradoxical nature, wherein the desire to understand the past conflicts with the inability to fully grasp it, creates a tension between knowing and not knowing. Keruth's analysis emphasizes the rhetorical potential of recurring motives in texts, which symbolize the fragmented nature of traumatic memory in history. Trauma, as conceptualized in this model, defies easy assimilation into the psyche and memory, resulting in a distorted and approximate recall rather than a determinate knowledge. Additionally, Karuth incorporates neurobiological perspectives such as Koch's concept of speechless terror to underscore trauma's profound impact on consciousness and its resistance to linguistic organization. The concept of trauma's trans-historical and intergenerational impact underscores its universal effects on identity and memory, both at the individual and collective levels. Kethi Karuth, drawing on Freud's theories, suggests that trauma transcends time and implicates individuals across generations in each other's traumas. This perspective highlights trauma's infectious potential and its ability to persist outside of linear time, defying simulation into memory. The connection between individual and collective experiences of trauma emphasizes the fragmentation or dissociation of consciousness, leading to a temporal gap in which the meaning of the experience remains indeterminate. Karuth argues that trauma disrupts the mind's experience of time, causing emotional suffering and rendering the event unlocatable in a coherent narrative. Despite its unrepresentability, the traumatic past continues to exert its influence on consciousness, creating an absence that gestures towards the event's existence while resisting epistemological or ethical determinacy. This notion of trauma's unrepresentability has been central to subsequent scholarship in the field. While maintaining the traditional Freudian Karuthian concept of trauma, scholars incorporate feminist, race, and postcolonial theories to analyze the social and cultural implications of extreme experiences and traumatic memory. For example, Bozen examines the trauma of racist institutions endured by the African American community in Toni Morrison's novels while Vicroy explores the formal innovations in narratives of trauma in contemporary fiction. Rothberg situates his analysis within a cultural studies framework, examining how traumatic experience produces both a narrative mode and a social response that reflect on the formal limits of representation. Criticism in trauma studies has evolved into a theoretical pluralism, that challenges the traditional Karuthian model, which emphasizes trauma's unspeakable nature and its dissociative effects on consciousness and memory. This pluralistic approach seeks to understand not only the structural dimensions of tra trauma, but also its cultural dimensions and the diversity of narrative expression it elicits. Rather than solely focusing on pathological fragmentation, this model suggests that traumatic experiences can lead to new understandings of the self and the world. Scholars such as Forter, Hungerford, Naomi Mandel and others have contributed to this pluralistic perspective. In this model, trauma is seen as an event that alters perception and identity, leading to the formation of a new knowledge about oneself 
and the external world. Traumatic events may result in an ambiguous understanding of the past and also offer determinate meaning, highlighting the variability of traumatic experiences and their representations. Unlike the traditional model, which often emphasizes trauma's inherent unspeakability, the pluralistic model acknowledges the influence of external cultural factors on the meaning of traumatic events. Memory, viewed as a fluid process of reconstruction rather than a static entity, is shaped by social and cultural contexts, impacting narrative recall and the creation of knowledge about the past. This approach suggests that traumatic memory, while disruptive, may not always cause pathological symptoms that prevent its retrieval and assimilation into identity. Instead, the recollection process is influenced by cultural and historical context, shaping the narrative of traumatic memory and allowing for multiple determinacies of value. By focusing on trauma specificity and the cultural context of individual and collective experiences, this pluralistic model enables a deeper understanding of representations of extreme experiences such as rape, war, genocide, slavery, and colonial expression. Scholars in this field emphasize the importance of considering social and cultural factors in interpreting trauma, moving beyond the notion of trauma as an unspeakable absence to explore its diverse meanings and impacts. In the work Against the Unspeakable, Complicity, the Holocaust and Slavery in America, Naomi Mandel challenges the traditional concept of trauma as unspeakable or that it serves as a discursive protection that avoids moral responsibility in representing atrocities. Mandel suggests that silence and forgetting are strategic gestures by both the subjugated and subjugating cultures. Similarly, Anne Ketkovich's An Archive of Feelings, Trauma, Sexuality and Lesbian Public Cultures explores trauma beyond pathology, focusing on its specificities in butch femme discourses and lesbian public cultures. She argues that trauma, including sexual trauma, lays the foundation for the formation of public cultures. Greg Forter, in his work Gender, Race and Gender, Race and Mourning in American Modernism, adapts the Freudian Carruthian trauma model to distinguish between punctual trauma, a catastrophic event, and non-punctual trauma, an ongoing experience. He introduces the concept of signification trauma, which allows for a transformative understanding. Photo's recent work applies this model to post-colonial novels, emphasizing the social, political, and cultural forces at play in representations of trauma. He argues that trauma's unrepresentable nature is not due to its being beyond history and representation, but is instead a result, a result of enforced ruptures with pre-colonial past and prohibitions against remembrance imposed by specific regimes of power. The field of trauma studies continues to evolve, incorporating perspectives from post-colonialism, feminist theory, ethnic studies, and eco-criticism. Recent collections, contemporary approaches in literary trauma theory, and the future of trauma theory further explore the socio-cultural and semiotic implications of trauma in literature. This breadth of criticism demonstrates the versatility and ongoing relevance of trauma studies to literary theory.